Good afternoon, dear colleagues, the organizers of the forum asked me to speak, say a few words in conclusion. I would like to thank you for your time, for your attention. I'd like to thank all panelists. I would like to thank Google for choosing our venue, our platform for this exchange. And uh, as the hostess here, I would like to share my a few ideas, a few issues related to internet environment that we face on a daily basis. When I was getting ready to this uh, uh, speech, I saw what Bertolt Brecht wrote in the 20th century. He said radio would have been the best system of media if it could not only transmit but receive data. So in less than a hundred years, the audience started talking. And in the recent five years, we switched from a one-way communication. We stopped being just listeners or viewers. Uh, when uh, radio, TV just broadcast its views. We sh migrated to a two-way communications when we listen and we say, when we view and we produce and publish. We are not just listeners, we are equal partners, because if you try to dictate, so the you will lose the audience. We have a lot of examples in Russian media history. Uh, this multi-channel, multi-way communications, uh, was a great shift, a tectonic shift, which took place almost um, unexpectedly. Uh, the entire philosophy and the culture of content sharing has changed, because mass media used to broadcast and forget. Now we receive and transmit at the same time. We all. We in Real Novosti see a situation of a generation gap. The generation gap is not about age and not about uh, ideology of media teams or content producers. It's not demographic. It's um, all about openness or closedness, so to say, of each and every person or organization. It's not technological, it's mm, cultural, mental, it's a mindset. And that's what we see every day. Apart from the generation gap, we have one more trend in mass media and society. It's a great digital divide between the regions, which in Russian can be noticed at once if we analyze geography of our audiences. If we look at the regional audience, then we shall see that the regional audience is localized within their territorial niches. They use their local internet resources. They are less and less interested in federal news. So they are confined to their geographic enclaves by time zones, which is only natural. Uh, we provide news in Moscow when it's daytime in Moscow, but in the Far East it's night and they don't care. Our news should be should take into account the time in different time zones. Then we also have billing warfare among content providers and content uh, generators. And of course uh, the wealth difference 
between different layers of society. And one more trend which I believe characterizes the current state of affairs in Russia is an interesting case that will get into historical manual. The growth of civil society doesn't take place through offline institutes, but through self-organizing online communities, which unexpectedly pop up and then disappear as unexpectedly. These trends in uh, information segment of the Internet where we are, the most acute issues are that we have no time at all. Content uh, generation, content distribution, looking at uh, customer reactions, uh, everything takes place instantly. So we had some time frame before, but now before you publish the news, you already start listening to customer reaction. But you haven't yet completed news delivery. Ten years ago, reaction to events in mass media was measured by hours. A few years ago, by tens of minutes. Now, by minutes, and we are coming to a situation when reaction will follow within seconds, online, in real time, when questions and answer will take place instantly. The figures that we use in RIA Novosti are as follows. The number of news items per hour in the last two years grew from 9 to 28 per hour. And this is the intensity of operation of our team, news team. It doesn't mean that we have more people now. It means that uh, they work much more intensively now. Non-text, multimedia content, uh, still images, video in the last year grew by 70% per hour. Per hour, we publish more than 65 new text news items. Five years ago, we published twice as little. And we work in uh, 24 by 7 um, mode. And we passed through different myths, uh, like our colleagues in the West. So we used to say that user content will kill traditional mass media. They failed to do so. Then brands will die. Audience will not be interested in who is, produces the news. That was wrong again. Text will die. Image will stay. High quality journalism will die as a profession. This also proved to be a myth. Uh, Twitter will replace the news agencies. We were afraid. We were scared. We watched the developments. Tweet flows were growing. Twitter started generating news faster than traditional news agencies. But what we see in the recent six months, we see a negative process which on the other hand, has a good positive result for us, traditional media, that try to react to the customer requirements. In the recent 6 to 12 months, especially in 2012, we have a tremendous growth of fake data items. And our role as a traditional mass media, multimedia news agency is to provide verification of news items. I am not going to tell you uh, a lot of fake accounts in tweet Twitter, fake Churov, head of the Russian Electoral Committee, and a lot of other things like that. So this is, can be called a mystification, a joke, I am not calling for regulation, for bans, for punishments, because this is the Internet. 
internet and regulations are two incompatible things. I just uh, point out the issues, uh, trying to say that we are an island of stability. We can verify uh, the news items when information can be true or false. Uh, you, you have to look for true data sources and we have a certain threat here when some people try to affect public opinion, when botnets try to raise a wave of certain opinions in uh, about, about events which didn't happen or which were distorted. The most dangerous element here is that, well, in the near future, we shall publish, uh, we shall set up online voting for different initiatives, and the public will have to vote, but uh, because of the bots, uh, the results of voting will be largely distorted. For example, when people try to vote for the new uh, law on police, botnets were so, were so active that the president is going to look for only uh, five or ten top amendments. The manipulators, the bots, uh, operated so actively that not a single really important amendments uh, had any chance to raise up in the rating list. Uh, so, of course, other mechanisms were invented, but when we talk about open government in Russia or elsewhere, when we switch to open rating technologies, um, raise a lot of issues, and the major issue is that of verification of data and data sources. Now, this forum is uh, carried out by Google, only such large systems, search systems as Google, together with large media companies and government agencies or super governmental agencies can try to find solutions to those issues. Uh, we deal with fake data, we try to stratify or classify them. Uh, the black part of the internet, as we call it, is divided into obsolete data, megatons of data, then erroneous information. Um, a mistake was made by chance and it was replicated. And then distortions which were, were inven invented and then published and legalized, as we said in the spying media. And then they reach, uh, such data reach its way to the Wikipedia pages one more area is distortion of public reactions by manipulations and uh, building thousands upon thousands of internet entities. These are a few examples of classical mistakes. Some of my uh, acquaintances, chemists, looked at Wikipedia and about one third of elements in Wikipedia has uh, a little change in atomic weight, platinum for instance, in point one, point uh, zero one difference. From the viewpoint of uh, science, it's catastrophic. It's intolerable, but Wikipedia is a well-known source, and this, uh, such kind of mistakes are multiplied and spread, and true information is covered by those thick layers of errors. I found in Wikipedia a couple of weeks ago 
that I uh, share the ideas of Nazism. <laughs> And I saw how this idea was traced, how they tried to prove it. Of course, uh, we can uh, correct such mistakes. It's much worse than uh, when such errors are imposed on I intention. I believe in self-regulation, in self-cleaning of the Internet environment, but uh, the speeds that we live in, the rates of change, uh, acuteness of public reactions, as well as uh, tremendous growth of distortion technologies, uh, all this doesn't give us a chance to wait for several years before self-regulation would clean up uh, the data sets of all the errors. Therefore, oh yes, I'm sorry, I wanted to begin with attention to a few figures, a few numbers. So uh, while preparing for this forum, we decided uh, to check uh, how uh, many bots we have among our accounts, and I'll make public some figures that I've never uh, shared, because in my mind they're quite revolutionary. So we've analyzed uh, on a representative uh, uh, selection uh, of 130,000 uh, subscribers on Twitter and half a million subscribers on Facebook. And based on uh, the random representative selection uh, that we did using, uh, with the help of sociologists, we got uh, a frightening uh, figures in our uh, up to uh, uh, from a quarter to a third of our uh, tweet accounts have attributes of bots, so they either uh, don't uh, update or uh, do uh, are only ac uh, active in retweeting uh, the rear novelty uh, Facebook page out uh, of the audience of half a million because Facebook is a more sophisticated environment than Twitter and uh, requires uh, more sophisticated ways uh, to address non-existing activities. Up to 10% of uh, subscribers uh, have attributes of being bots. So the question is, uh, where did those bots uh, emerge from? Uh, that's for sure we didn't do it ourselves. We don't need fake accounts. It uh, would rather discredit us uh, than win our reputation. And uh, we're not earning on advertising. Uh, so where did botnet uh, technology uh, appear from? It was because uh, of the per hit uh, uh, revenue uh, that uh, advertisers uh, were earning. In my opinion, the bots uh, come to us uh, to get a good credit history. So if you're a bot and you have a subscription uh, to Aria Novosti, then maybe uh, you're not a bot and you're a human. So uh, such a, a social event uh, when uh, you create uh, non-existing entities uh, presenting themselves to be humans. Uh, how do we uh, fight this fraud? Well, we try uh, to make efforts uh, to uh, clean up our account base, and in fact, uh, the uh, uh, media sites uh, have uh, jumped into uh, this activity, which is uh, not uh, supposed to be their main business to do this verification. And by the way, about half a year ago, uh, we've got a new line of business. So we regularly uh, check uh, the uh, accuracy of those uh, tweets uh, or posts uh, that uh, have uh, enlisted interest or attention on behalf of the public. So we check the information uh, to make sure uh, that uh, they present real facts from all sorts of sources. We also do this uh, kind of non-core business uh, because uh, we verify and check these facts and news. Uh, so we started to do uh, instrumental measurements. So for instance, 
uh, we uh, measure the temperature, uh, outside temperature, with our own uh, meteorological station uh, that's uh, located on the roof uh, of the building. Uh, the most interesting example uh, was uh, when we used aerial photography uh, to uh, try and gauge the number of uh, participants uh, in public rallies in Sakharova, in uh, Bolotnaya. You remember there was a wide uh, discrepancy beca between the official estimates and uh, the number of participants uh, uh, published uh, by the organizers. Uh, so uh, that we had to find a way uh, to get this information ourselves. Uh, and we use all the different uh, tools uh, from geodetical uh, survey uh, to uh, putting uh, special cameras uh, that make pictures of uh, the squares where rallies take place uh, so that we can manually count them. Uh, but that's not the most important uh, thing. Uh, the important thing is th that uh, we started to measure things. And a photographer today uh, goes to a rally not uh, to take a beautiful picture, uh, but uh, one of his functions in to make is to make a picture that would allow us uh, to count the number of people in the square. That's the question of how technologies uh, change uh, news approaches. And now uh, about our role of a verifier of information. Uh, starting 1st of May, uh, we're launching our uh, uh, tweet news feeds. Uh, so uh, this feed uh, includes a thousand accounts uh, of uh, Twitter uh, that uh, are following us, and they're verified accounts. So uh, within uh, three minutes uh, of um, news being published in a social network, we verify uh, the source of uh, the news and uh, verify the uh, true character of the message. So that's basically all I wanted to say. I wanted just to uh, describe uh, the main problem, challenge, the validity of information and approaches to its verification. And I uh, would like, uh, and oh, we're trying, uh, we're trying uh, to uh, bring up a question of the need uh, to develop criteria of a verification of information. I don't know which way. Pictograms uh, or uh, logos uh, that could uh, mark verified uh, information, you know, from uh, uh, the British Encyclopedia uh, all the way to uh, Library of Congress and also a verification uh, of controversial information. So this is a huge problem and uh, you, uh, well there's no way uh, to uh, find uh, about the accuracy of information uh, without reaching out uh, to the broadest uh, public. So uh, basically uh, my intervention uh, is more uh, of putting a question forth to you to think about uh, rather than offering a solution. And I'm hoping uh, that the discussions that we've had today uh, in this uh, forum uh, are not going to end uh, as we close this event, uh, but that you'll pick them up and continue them, discussing them in your uh, forum, in uh, your uh, uh, tweet feeds. And uh, the problem uh, is uh, such as uh, one of my friends uh, put, uh, online is uh, flowing into offline. So things have started uh, in uh, online media and now uh, we're taking them up, uh, taking grips uh, to them uh, in our society and our real life. Thank you so much for your attention.